Hello, everybody. My name is Indiano. I'm an absolute fucking menace to society. And uh, it's very nice to be back in your country again. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful, Paul. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, brother. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as I said, we, we just got in uh, two days ago. I'm absolutely fucked. Um, I forgot how long it takes to get back over here. Um, I'm absolutely dying. Um, so, yeah, we're getting, getting a little bit, but this is the quickest way. When I normally go back to Sydney and see all my family and everything, oh, it's fucking 26 hour flying, and oh, I feel like a piece of dog shit. Anyway, all right, so far. <laughs> Good, mate. Now, you're here touring Australia for a run of shows starting January the 16th in Perth, then you head to Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, and finish in Sydney on January the 20th, mate. So, are these going to be your first shows for the year? Uh, no, 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 I've done those. Um, Blimey, me, uh, oh, I can't keep up. Just done a British tour, done a few European festivals. Uh, it's fucking hard and all while I'm in this wheelchair because I'm all I'm, I've just got to get the physio done. I have to start walking again. Um, but that's non-existent while I'm on the road. You know, it's just fucking yeah. so hard to do. But um, now after this, we've got to go. And, as soon as we're done here in Australia, we're going straight over to South America, in Chile, uh, Paraguay, Argentina. And then I go back, and then I'm taking a couple of months off to get this together. Then I'm straight back home. I'll, I'll be back in Brazil on my birthday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Back in the where, where I live most of the time, and I'm based in Brazil anyway, yeah. or, or back in England. So I'll be back in Sao Paulo on my birthday. So that's going to be a fucking part and a half. Fucking know it is, mate. Give me the date, I'll book it in now. <laughs> yeah, May 17th. <laughs> now, the shows you're doing here mate like it's a straight run of five shows in five days like how do you prepare yeah. yourself mentally and physically for something like that so far from home especially at the moment now you're in a wheelchair well mentally enough it is it doesn't really matter but um now uh oh, no, i've just got used to it really um i don't really like doing five days straight off like maybe three and then stop have a day off and that whatever but it is what it is. You just, just got to get on with it, you know. So the only problem I'm having is since I've come over here, and I get this back in England and in Europe and all that stuff with the uh, with the allergies with the warm weather. Yeah. Like I've got it now. I'm just not here. Got uh, you know. But hopefully we get it cleared up in the next couple of days. But apart from that, you just got to get on with it. You know, it's, it's, it's my, the, the toughest part is not being on stage. The toughest part is getting on airplanes and. Yeah. Fucking about and all that stuff. But as I said, I shouldn't be fucking walking over a year ago now, but we, I'm doing myself in by keep going on tour because I can't have nothing else to do. I'm sitting at home scratching my ass doing fuck all. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a while since you played here in Australia, man. Like, what, what couldn't Australian fans expect from your shows? Oh, uh, we're, we're finishing up. As I said, it's uh, I've not been able to play. Uh, like, this is my first time back in say eight years, nine years now. Because basically, I couldn't keep fuck all with this, but they wouldn't let me fly because of the sepsis and all that shit. Uh, so basically, what we've been doing is saying a big thank you and a farewell, not from touring, but doing Night Maiden stuff. So this is the whole Maiden Heavy show. It's the, like songs of the first two albums, which have been rather good and quite successful. I'm quite surprised, actually. So we're doing that because Night Maiden have got to play the fucking songs, you know. <laughs> um well, Bruce doesn't seem to be very happy with my song, which I'm quite surprised. It's like a lot of people singing than I am. But, you know, there you go. It's got a quite right approach, you know, so that is doing stuff, so it's getting on from there. I've lost you, not here. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, mate, I got you. So, what did you say? You, the shows you're doing, you're doing both Maiden I, I, my Maiden albums in the shows. That's what it is. Nothing else. And then next year we come out. There should be uh, coming out very soon. Is uh, like a greatest hits of mine. Greatest hits, fucking yeah, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like tracks from uh, like Battle Zone, Killers. Uh, the punk band is like about we put the Almighty and Brez and stuff from Nomad. We got a couple of tracks from each coming out on this uh, album called the uh, the Book of the Beast. So once that's done, uh, then we got the movie coming out in a couple of months as well. It's like a, a rocky documentary we've been doing uh, by Wes Olchowski, um from New York, and that's that's all coming out. Mm -hmm. So we've got all that stuff to do. Then I've got to go back into rehearsals 
to learn all the stuff of mine, which I can't fucking remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying this for myself, mate, because looking at you, I know you're going to fucking deliver the goods, but there's going to be people out there that are going to say, uh, he's in a wheelchair, the show's not going to be that good. But ah. set these cuts straight for us, will you? Yeah, I'll bring fucking head off shit down your neck and come up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll surprise myself sometimes because I didn't know how difficult it was going to be to do this in the wheelchair. But everyone comes up and says, fuck me, how'd you do it? And I thought, well, I don't know. Because, and I really don't know, but I'm laughing my ass off because I'm watching the, the Simpsons episode where Homer's hurt his back and he's flat on a fucking trolley and he's singing like a like you know an opera singer. I thought, blimey, this is working for me. So what happens if I stand up when boys all go to shit again? That's the most. <laughs> the sheer determination, just getting pissed off with it all. So just, you know, um, I work on, I don't know, I, I think I've one of the things that piss me off all through the week and get out there and do it, you know. It's, a, it's a quite aggressive. <laughs> Good. And if meatloaf, if meatloaf can do it, you can fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, me like, yeah, he's really done him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back in history, right. mate, like, you first started performing in 1978 with Iron Maiden. So, what do you remember yeah. about your early days as a vocalist? Fuck all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying it because I, 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 uh, I mean, I, I grew up in the punk era, yeah. Um, and even before that, you know, with the old David Bowie and in, you know, T Rex and all that stuff, I was able to sit in my bedroom and I could sound like them. I mimicked them very well, you know, really, really well. And then when the punk thing came out, I'm fucking, oh, maybe, maybe I can sing, you know, I'll see if I can do it. And like the guys, it didn't really matter who punched, you fuck up anyway. So there you <laughs> go. And, and the boys came on from there. And this is getting better with getting older, you know, it's getting good still, you know. I said that. I, I, I bollocks myself now when I'm saying that. That's probably sound like fucking wet fart when we go out on stage. Then. <laughs> <laughs> then, like after, of course, after recording the two albums with Maiden, you left in 1981, mate. So, were you, you would have been young and impressionable back then, mate. Like, were you a bit disillusioned with the music industry after ending your time with Maiden? Nah, no. I, I've always been disillusioned. I, I don't trust these fucking people. They're, you know, like I'm, I, I know I shouldn't say that, but. Yeah, you got to look at it as us and them. You know, I, I've never been too, you know, even the same with management and stuff like that. You should keep a separation there. You know what I mean? Uh, but I see what's going on in there. I'm, I'm under no illusions and stuff like that. Uh, as I said, I have got no regrets in you know me and Maiden sort of flip, like parting ways because that's what that's one. You know, you move on. Lessons learned, even though it sounds sound like a lot of bollocks about going back and doing this again. Um, but I mean, it's, I'm, I'm disillusioned with the way things are musically now because kids can sit in their own with a computer and they're not getting any experience. The, the real experience is getting out the fucking road playing every shit hole in the world. And that's what the cool thing you do, is, you know, and that's how you get it up, you know, and get on with it. So, yeah, that's it. But that's, that's, that makes me a bit pissed off. And, and now our kids all, nowadays all, all believe that they're, they're entitled to be fucking rock stars. Yeah. You ain't entitled to fuck all, mate. Get out and do some work, you know? <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> Since then, you've fronted many bands, including, oh, I can't even say it, Gog Magog, and you're praying banders, there's Killers, Rock, yeah. Rock and Warhorse. So how have you grown musically over that journey with all those bands? How have what? How have you grown musically, over, grown musically over that journey? Oh, I'm always getting better, that's sure. But that, listen, some of these things, I just did it just to fucking get a bit of money in here and there. Like the God, my God thing, it's supposed to be in the super group, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, which we found later on put, by, put together by some fucking uh, radio person called Jonathan King. Back in, in, in the 60s, he had a hit with everyone's gone to the moon. Uh, and, you know, we found it a pedo. He went to prison and everything, you know. The thing is, you want him and uh, Rod Argent, who got this thing together, went to, and I replaced David Coverdale as a singer. All right. Yeah, and uh, it, that, the original band was John Entwistle on bass, Cozy Powell on drums, uh, 
and a couple of other like sort of well known fucking you know big musicians, and he's asked for something like about eighty million fucking pounds to sign this super group, and it all got dwindled down. So I've replaced Coverdale. Uh, we've got Neil Murray from White Snake came in to play bass, uh, Clive Burr on drums, Yannick Gers on guitar, and uh, Pete Willis from Death Leopard on guitar as well, which is pretty oh. awesome. Yeah. But they would let they would let us write any songs, and we thought their songs are crap. So, you know, so that was just a project, so I wasn't that bothered about, you know, either way. Uh, all the other stuff, you know, like the stuff they've done with Dennis and all that, that was my old manager trying to be a clever cunt, putting everything together. And yeah, it's not me, but the only stuff I'm, I'll take pride in is with Battle Zone and with Killers, same sort of band, you know, we just sort of changed the name a little bit for contractual reasons and that. And uh, yeah, quite good. <laughs> sure. And you've been referred to as a heavy metal icon with the heart of a punk rock rebel. Like, would you agree with that? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, basically, you're just like practicing with heavy metal band. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, mate. Well, 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 <laughs> I don't ask this question to many people, mate, but you're probably one of the few people in the world qualified to answer it. So what would you put as your top three commandments of heavy metal? I took, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, I guess. Top three commandments of heavy metal. Uh, don't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep time for the people who pay money for the tickets to come and see you. Uh, that, that's one of mine. That's, that's the one number one for me. Oh, I can't stand that. You know, yeah. like you come into a show and, oh, can I have an autograph? No, you know, I, I, can't, I can't do that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I respect people who, you know, to, you can come and see me. I think it's fucking amazing. Uh, treat them all with respect. Like, I think it's all about respect and that, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I know some people do it and it's VIP shit and all that. I think, man, I wouldn't shut up because I, I'm not involved in that. You know, I, I sign autographs anyway, but I don't give a shit. You know, so that's another thing I really don't like. But my commandments are pretty much... Try and do the best you can every night. Uh, be respectful to the audience as well. Don't go slagging them off. Uh, and uh, just do the best you can. That's yeah. it. Beautiful. All right, Paul. I can help you. Take any drugs as you possibly can. Fuck as many women as you can. But that's it. But that. Uh, it's all the part. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for your time, mate. I know you're a bit hungover from last night, so I appreciate it. The tour kicks off on. January 16th in Perth. I'm going to come along to the Brisbane show, mate, so it'd be good to catch up for a beer. Excellent. Oh, good. Excellent. Good stuff.